Hey everybody and welcome to another Sims 4 speed build and I'm sorry I've been a little bit absent of late but I'm hoping to change that I've got a bunch of stuff coming up and of course we've got Realm of Magic coming out soon so I've got some really um, cool ideas for some builds for that so today uh, I thought I would build something that is a little bit of um, an icon I guess for the children that grew up in the 60, the 50s, 60s and 70s um, and that is a drive-in. So this is done on I believe um, the largest lot 64 by 64. So um, you may, I think there's only one lot uh, in Willow Creek that it'll fit on. I might be wrong, um, I might just be, I don't know, blowing smoke up something, somebody something for no reason. Um, I can't quite remember because I did film this a little while ago. Um, so yes, today we're putting together a drive-in and what every drive-in had was those gentle like large speed humps but they were gently humped for the cars to park on so that you could tilt your car a little bit forward and get a nice view of the big screen through your windscreen. They also had either um, speakers that you hooked on your window so you wound your window down you lifted this big heavy metal speaker off hooked it to your window obviously pointing to the inside of the car and then wound your window up again so um, you could you know hear the movie basically or when new technology came in they actually had clips that you could clip to your car aerial and that was your um, that was how you listen to it is through the car radio. Um, Drive-ins here where I live uh, in Western Australia there is only one left and it only opens I think one day on the weekend and I think there is talk that it is going to close down so um, they really are a thing of the past and it's a real shame because they did used to be quite a social gathering for not just um, families but or well, not just teenagers but families as well so um, the other things that drive-ins had was obviously a toilet block and that's what we're building over there at the moment um, they also usually had a playground in front of the screen because the screen was up high um, and I don't know you could kind of keep an eye on the the playground while you're keeping an eye on the movie and also it had some sort of cafeteria or um, or somewhere where you could buy hot food and you know get a cup of coffee or whatever so we're working um, I'm just laying the basic uh, or setting the basic layout here so we've got the giant TV screen uh, and just putting in some playground items I think some of those will go and I change them to something else but that's the general area that the playground will be in um, and just having a think a search through or a think about what else I could put in there and I decided um, as you can see here I didn't really like the texture of the gravel even though most drive-ins were completely gravel um, I decided to replace it with grass just really for aesthetics um, and even though I've only just done around the edges I will replace all of the gravel and only have it on those those humps um, so just trying to work out and I, I did come across a little bit of a bug and I think I hope um, I solved it by updating my graphics card or rolling back my graphics card driver and then re-updating it because um, and you'll see I'm not sure if I cut it out but what happens is I wanted to put a little archway in there which looks really cute but you can see you it actually gets rid of um, the fencing like it made it just disappear even though it the game recognized the fencing as still being there you could use an archway to just blank out your fences so uh, you saw it very quickly I couldn't I didn't actually solve it so where you see um, the gaps in the fences I'm, I apologize they're still in the video but I have uploaded and re-downloaded this and with the updated video card those fences are back 
so solved all right you don't have to worry about it I'm just saying you know for those of you who might be having a sim similar problem give a go um, at updating your video card okay so we're just trying to sort out how big whereabouts we should have um, our ooh, quick visit to the um, the gallery uh, and because I didn't want to make the playground too big but by the same token I, this is a community lot so I did want to make it useful for when your sims came to visit um, so we are um, just thinking about the cafeteria and in the end we don't just have a cafeteria we in fact have a cafeteria and a little like bar uh, or a small nightclub because I sort of thought that drive-ins were a real gathering place for teens iconically from the 50s and 60s when I was a teenager it was the thing to do on the weekend you know you go with your boyfriend your girlfriend whatever off to the drive-in I'm sure there's a lot of children walking around these days that might owe their existence to a weekend visit to the drive-in uh, no judgment so we're trying to give the um, the toilet block here uh, a little bit of a plusher feel um, my my kind of vision for this is a reimagined drive-in where somebody has gone hey I've got this awesome idea why don't we build an iconic drive-in from the 50s or 60s but make it a little more modern and have the facilities not just a concrete toilet block you know with cock uh, cock cracked concrete floors and um, uh, you know sort of off-white tiles but make a little more plush and these days too we have to be aware of um, if you want it to be a family style venue you have to provide facilities for the family so we do have a um, uh, parents room in the toilet block so that you know um, and a, a men's and a woman's one so that I know um, from my experience when I was raising my children it was sometimes uncomfortable for some of the women to have male parents in there I hope we've got over that now I hope that we are much more enlightened than that and we realize that a parent is a parent is a parent and if you're in there trying to change a screaming child you don't want to look at you know what's happening with the breastfeeding and and all that sort of stuff you're just in there to try and wrestle this child into a new set of underwear and get the hell out of there because you've just about had a gut full of taking this child out all right so I hope we're more enlightened however in this scenario we have provided a somewhat um, comfortable men's and women's uh, parents room as well as um, obviously the, the toilets and um, this little bar that I hope will be an, a bit of a meeting place um, for people we've got in the end we end up with a DJ booth and a dance floor where you can see through to the floor below but the, the cafeteria part itself now you can see there um, I'm replacing all the gravel but anyway sidetracked the the cafeteria part will still feel almost like that traditional drive-in cafeteria where you go in you line up you get your food and you get out again now what I haven't been able to work out or at least haven't taken the time to work out is getting these lots to actually open and have have them as working commercial venues but I'm, I'm sure all you um, amazing simmers out there know exactly how to sort that out and you will have your sims buying you know a little muffin and a, and a, and a latte at the cafe um, before heading home or perhaps you could use it as a venue uh, I mean what a quirky wedding destination hire a um, uh, a barman hire a, um, a DJ and you know have your function there or you know a fun outing for the family house party birthday party all of those things used to happen at drive-ins I remember uh, again as a teen um, attending birthday parties at the drive-in and 
um, we would have a birthday cake sat down on a you know on one of the picnic benches down in the picnic area and during intermission everybody would be down there to blow out the candles and um, you know have a bit of birthday cake and all that sort of thing another iconic part of going to the drive-in was you know as I said earlier that social aspect where you didn't just rock up in your little insular you know pod your little car and not speak to anybody you spoke to the people in the car beside you oftentimes particularly in the summertime it's not to say that um, the drive-ins weren't used in the wintertime because they absolutely were but in the summertime you know all the windows were down and um, not that we had really a lot of convertible cars here in Australia it didn't tend to we have too much Sun so um, that doesn't happen too often but uh, windows were down often people would be lying on we call it the bonnet you might call it the hood of the car you know propped up against the windscreen often with um, blankets and a couple of pillows you know kicked back there with some snacks and things we also had um, we would call them ute or short for utility vehicles you would call them a truck that's basically a car that has a tray on the back and the tray can have sides and have a like a tarp over it or it can be a flat you know flat bed or whatever but we would call that a ute um, we would only call it a truck once it was sort of up into the the truck license requirement sort of size um, and oftentimes people would have in the back of station wagons or what we would call panel vans Now I'm not sure if um, if wherever you're from and I'd love to hear about it whether or not you have their, their cars but the back area is almost like a cargo space so it's not a van the front half of the car if you had the drivers the driver and the passenger the front driver and passenger and the front end of the car and everything completely like a normal um, sedan or station wagon um, but the back part of it would be more of a cargo space so they were we tend to use things in Australia we tend to make more um, multi-purpose stuff we we um, I think we have this culture of um, using things for as many or, or making things usable for as many different purposes as possible and oftentimes in the backs of panel vans it's a perfect size and again no judgments out there if you had a panel van um, perfect size for a double bed mattress into the back of the van utilities utes also perfect size for a um, double bed mattress some blankets couple of pillows great place if you park the vehicle backwards um, the utes often had the back window would sort of flip up so you know it would be uh, like a horizontal window and it would flip up so you could watch your movie you know through there uh, and as I said very social you'd often have um, and I don't want to want to say that I ever took part in it but you'd often have um, somebody drive in with a station wagon or a panel van and under laid flat under blankets and in floor wells would be another half a dozen people so you'd pay for you and your boyfriend or you and your girlfriend to go through all innocent like and then you'd get to your parking space and then six more people would suddenly appear and it would be you know a group outing and I know that lots of people out there um, that I went to school with that I hung out with as a teenager um, that's just what we did on the weekends and I guess perhaps in retrospect we probably contributed to the downfall because if all six people or all eight people had paid uh, maybe they might have lasted a little bit longer I'm kidding because we all know that videos and DVDs absolutely killed that because why go out in the rain um, to you know three suburbs away when you can stay home and watch this in the comfort of your lounge room you know pop into the kitchen to get a cup of tea when you felt like it or coffee um, but yeah so I really enjoyed putting this together it brought back so many nostalgic thoughts for me um, as I said about growing up 
Um, you can see here we're putting together, we have a beautiful commercial kitchen in there. So if you do decide to use this as um, some sort of commercial venue or um, a destination venue, you can absolutely, you have the facilities there. Um, we've got this, uh, I tried to, to go, the look in here where we've got the face brick and the walls, we've gone for something a little bit modern and then on the floor is that lino that's really evocative or linoleum, um, really evocative of what the, the old fashioned um, drive-in theatres used to be in the cafeteria. So we've gone for these really bright sort of cheap looking but very trendy um, chairs around the tables and as you can see here very much a commercial style kitchen it's very um, it reminds me actually of a stainless steel kitchen in a um, you know a restaurant or something like that but there's plenty of room in there if you wanted to convert this to somewhere that your sims lived if your sim was perhaps the caretaker that lived there there's plenty of room to add that if your sims were um what else homeless but i'm saying air quotes homeless and they wanted to live at the drive-in there's a room that you could absolutely modify this and this it's a 64 by 64 lot i would love to hear if you turned this into a residential situation and you um, had some sims in there that had a, a real story to tell uh, so please you know leave your comments down below or um, you know catch up with me on Twitter or on um, whereabouts I think I think our discord might be I might um, I hope I've put a link to our wilder side uh, discord in the description below uh, this lot is also available for download from the gallery and I'll also have the download link in the down there as well. All right, so um, you will see when I'm building, well, there you go, I change the time of day often so that I make sure that I've got the lighting right because um, at a drive-in, what you want is for the cafeteria to be lit but you don't want the light to be um, interfering with the movie. Now, there is one thing I did, I did forget here, or not forget, I chose to leave out really, and that is that I didn't put the little projection house. Because again, traditionally, at a drive-in, you would have had um, the movies being played on film and you would have had a film projector projecting it up onto that screen but that screen is a television so um, not the outdoor cinema screen so um, so I chose to leave it out because if you do make it a residential lot you would just use the television um, you wouldn't use the projection hut but you could absolutely add that in and put perhaps put a little bit of a basement in and maybe that's where your caretaker lives and he takes care of the the projection screen projection screen or the projection room I think that would be pretty cute now in order to make this a, um, a viable community lot it has certain requirements and toilets are one um, oh gosh, and there goes my clock. I don't seem to be able to um, uh, get through a video without um, with, without that noise in the background. Um, but you had to have toilets, obviously. Um, you had to have uh, also a um, a chess table is one of the things. So I put that little area where, again, it's an area where it's part of the playground but not it's a little bit separate and I'm loving the debug items guys girls um, I don't know about you but I use them all the time and I love that we've got all of these cars I wish our sims could get in them and drive um, because that would be amazing but um, failing that I love that we've got them to use so um, and again that little truck there 
we would call that a ute. Um, it's probably like a large, uh, what I'm talking about, slightly smaller, more normal car size, but with that tray on the back. And you can see some of them are parked backwards. And um, I think when we get to the screenshots, you'll be able to see that I've even done a couple of them with a bit of a mattress in the back. Uh, it was also traditional to bring, um, now we would call them an esky, which is a, um, a, a foam and plastic or a plastic tub uh, that would be like have double walls with foam insulation in between. Sometimes they're made of aluminium or aluminum, depending on where you're from. Uh, and uh, they're, they're a cooler bin. Um, I know um, my New Zealand relatives and in-laws would call them chili bins. Um, and I apologise if I did a terrible accent. But you can see here I'm putting the speakers on the posts and each post would have two speakers, one for each and, and a car would park either side of it and you would just take the speaker off and hook it to your car window. Um, and as you know, um, when I was going to the drive-in, you know, often if you were, if you came in the last five minutes or arrived in the last five minutes before the movie started, the only place to park would have been the front. So I've tried to reflect this in the placement of the cars in that there's more cars in the back row than what there is in the front row, but still, you know, spaces, people like to be in the center, obviously toward the back because that's where you got the best view. Um, and you can see that each and every one of those speakers and posts were hand placed and hand raised every single time. That took me hours. Um, but as I said, this brought back so many um, fond and funny and hilarious and stories that I can't, um, I can't relate to you because it's totally inappropriate. But I had so much fun building it um, that I, you know it was just uh, it was just so much fun. Anyway, so here we're going. We're putting some items in. These are a couple of little of the cushions that you can sit on, and that is what we would call an esky. You would, might call it a cooler or a tilly bin or something else. And as you can see, a couple of little mattresses. People also used to have chairs in the back. Um, oftentimes they would be. Um, uh, a lounge uh, or a sofa chair. Uh, I don't know what you would call a, a lounge suite, the chairs, but often back in that sort of um, in the 50s, 60s and 70s, um, lounge suites, sofa suites, the chairs would have wooden legs and often they would just cut the legs off and put them in the back as they were. So I thought I would include a couple of them as well. So now we are upstairs working on the bar. I tried to make it a little bit trendy and a little bit cool, but also somewhere that was a usable um, venue if you did choose to you know, take your Sims there, use it as a destination for some kind of event. Um, and, you know, to be honest, if this drive-in existed in, in my city, I would be there, you know, as often as I could because it was so much fun and I even, to, to the one drive-in that we have surviving here, I have taken my children and we did go and watch, you know, um, uh, oh gosh, I can't even remember what movies now, it was a grey cells, but, you know, they enjoyed it as much as, as you know, I did as a child. I remember going with my parents and my auntie and my cousins. So there would have been my mum and dad, my auntie, and then I'm one of six children and my auntie had three children with her. She had four children, but she had three with her. So nine children and three adults in a station wagon designed to seat six. Um, no seat belts. Oh, there were the, the kids were just piled in like a litter of puppies into the back and the seat. Um, and it was, and, and please don't mistake that for me recommending that you don't wear your seat belt because absolutely not. Um, but I'm just saying it, it's just one of those childhood memories. Hey, we survived, but then there was a lot of them, a lot of 
people that didn't. I just think that um, you know we don't we didn't go as fast then. We weren't as you know aggressive on the roads. We didn't have that sense of urgency to get from A to B. So you know it's not to say that we had less accidents. It's just that I get the feeling that it just wasn't that as critical feeling but absolutely wear your seatbelt girls and boys ladies and gentlemen those of indeterminate or undecided orientations wear your seatbelts and make sure that your children and your loved ones have them on as well um, so we're just doing some you know finishing of the clutter details kitting this out as an actual kitchen you know what i was disappointed in is i just put the coffee machine and the coffee grinder um they have they take up an entire countertop and you can't you can't move them you know if you put move objects on and hold your alt key down you can put something normally any other um item you can pop on your countertop and then use your alt key and move it around and stuff like that but those ones will only snap to a countertop they won't let you free place so we're just about done here's the screenshots here's our little playground our chess area uh, the toilet block from the outside which I think looks really cute and really modern our entertainment area the little cafeteria and you can see the gorgeous dance floor from above this is our cool little um, bar upstairs and the DJ booth and there's our Alara sim you know getting jiggy with it not getting jiggy with it getting down on the dance floor and a couple of pictures of the cars in the in the, the drive-in I hope you enjoyed this build um, watching this build as much as I enjoyed building it and wherever you are today whatever you're doing I hope you have a good one